Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. The most neglected sin. That's the message topic this morning. Today we are going to learn about an unrecognized sin by which many families have been destroyed and many believers have been defiled it is the source of countless spiritual and physical problems in millions of lives today this sin is called bitterness bitterness is the most neglected and unnoticed sin in our hearts bitterness is growing in much families Bitterness is growing in the societies and even in the churches. Children are bitter towards parents, parents are bitter towards children, siblings are bitter towards each other. There is bitterness in workplace, there is bitterness in the church. People are bitter towards pastor and sadly many pastors are bitter towards the congregation. Bitterness between believers over hurtful words and misunderstanding deeds and attitudes is dividing the churches worst of all many are bitter towards god and his word and his church bitterness is known in the bible as a spiritual poison and a means by which many are defiled hebrews 12:15 says defiled means impure morally contaminated morally the holy bible tells us that many are defiled by the means of bitterness bitterness can be tricky to recognize because it's not a symptom or visible on the surface like other sins usually are bitterness starts as a root it starts like a root and it's very hard to detect The root of bitterness is not large on the surface where it can be easily detected rather it's like a cancer cell bitterness does its cunning work down deep in the marrow of our souls only after it has spread do symptoms surface in bitter words bitter thoughts and bitter deeds bitterness is unsolved and unforgiven anger and resentment that is residing in us it is synonymous for resentment and envy bitterness is synonymous for envy and resentment envy is bitterness towards another person who has received something we want that we think we deserve envy is a form of anger that might not be obvious to others until something triggers as angry outburst or reaction by the envious person i don't want to explain that i have explained in the last message resentment is bitterness and anger that someone feels about someone or something left unchecked continued resentment can change someone's nature into bitterness bitterness blows out the candle of joy and leaves the soul in darkness that's the reason by bitterness many are defiled bible wants us one key sign of spiritual danger of bitterness is losing your joy if you are constantly losing your joy you are not able to come up in your joy even if you know the joy of the salvation or joy of the lord is the strength you are meditating so much you are praying for the joy but still you are not getting joy why you know this root is there growing inside because bitterness will put off our joy joy of salvation joy of our soul the root of bitterness mentioned in hebrews 12:15 is the hurt that is planted in your heart it may be intentional or unintentional it means someone doesn't mean to hurt you but you were hurt sometimes the hurt is only imagined someone has hurt you it's just a misunderstanding and There are also times when the hurt may be very chastisement of God through trials 
and tribulations and test hebrews 12 14 says listen to me very carefully follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord it is important as believers that we maintain the right perspective towards our life difficulties and the struggles and the temptations in relationship with our understanding about god and his relationship with his children we should understand how father in heaven is dealing with us just like in our own family our parents or we are parents how we deal with our children father in heaven also will deal with his children we should never forget that relationship when we are off from that understanding we will misunderstand everything what is happening to us i don't know whether you understood or what we need to be careful not to fall in the trap of deceiving ourselves into thinking that god is being cruel to us when we face trials pains and tribulations and temptations that we go through we should understand the purpose of god in our life that is our sanctification alone god has a purpose in everyone's life even if a person runs away from god even if a person remains in his life with all his pride as an atheist as an atheist think that they are great people because we don't believe in god but still everything is fine with us that's what they say you people believe in god but you are not better than us that's what the atheists say but the day will come to prove that that they are not able to understand okay so we should understand there is a purpose for god in everyone's life that is our sanctification to be like jesus christ first john 3 2 and hebrews 12 8 says if we don't like to participate in god's disciplinary methods through trials and temptations we are bastards bible is telling in hebrews 12 8 bible is calling the children of god who do not want to go through the disciplinary method of god to be bastards monsters god is calling us why because people don't want to go through the struggles and trials in life they always want good things before them one prayer everything should happen if that is not happening they are angry with god and people okay that was the state of the believers when they were not in christ now they have called in christ why you are in christ to know the reality of god to have the knowledge of god we were in the darkness now we came to the light of god so now we should understand the purpose of the troubles and trials and tribulations that we are going through the purpose of the painful life that we are going through that is for our sanctification so if you are not cooperating with god for god's purpose in our tribulations how do we know that we are not cooperating we are grumbling we are murmuring we are angry with god and people then you are not participating you are not participating in god's disciplinary method after being a child of god so such people are called bastards in hebrews 12 8 we are advised to use the trials and temptations for our spiritual growth however painful it may be hebrews 12 11 if our perspective towards the difficulties that we go through differs from what god has in our mind we can easily become bitter did you get me i'll read it if our perspective towards the difficulties the trials and the tribulations that we are going through differs from what god has in mind for us we can easily become bitter the bitter root will definitely grow in believers in the world bitter root is growing in all the people because they don't understand what is sin they think sin is natural they are born with sin they have to die with sin so they have no understanding i'm not talking about the people who are outside i'm talking about the believers if you and me are living as bastards or monsters nothing other than bitter root grow in our life please understand my friends this great truth through the phrase in hebrews 
14, which says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We are given the focus and warning which we must maintain during the times of our sufferings. That is, following peace and holiness. This commandment is stated in strong language with a warning without pursuing peace and holiness. Bible is telling pursue peace, search peace and pursue peace, seek peace, make peace. Because peace is not there. It is our attempt. By prayer you don't get peace. Please understand, many people will think if they go to God and pray and worship, they get peace. You have to make peace. Sometimes you may get peace having all this bitter root inside. But that will vanish away. I told you, the bitter root will put off your joy. You can never ever be joyful in your Christian life. How much ever you meditate. Hallelujah. This command is stated in a strong language with a warning, without pursuing peace and holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The term no man indicates that there are no exceptions to this requirement, whether you are a believer or not a believer, whether you are a baptized person or a non-baptized person. Eh? Nobody will see God while they are living in this world and after their death, if they are not following peace, if they are not making peace, if they don't pursue peace. This is the spiritual truth. Without having peace, people will say, I know God, I have seen God. Bible says, last Friday we have learned, if a person says if he knows God and not obeying God's commandment is a liar. Many people will say, I know God, I have seen God. In drawings, in pictures. Bible says, without peace, you can never understand this God. The peace we don't get just by one prayer. You have to make peace. You have to follow peace. You have to pursue peace. How difficult it is, you and me know. This is the hard work in our born again life. Hallelujah. When we are struggling with the problems, we are often tempted to think that we don't deserve to go through those pains that we are going through. We must accept that life can be hard. Life is hard. And when bad things happen to us, it's natural to feel an angry or bitter response and begin to compare our situations with that of others and envy others. But we should understand this truth. God is ultimately in control of our life and our situation. God knows what situation we have to go through. Today, what situation you have to go through, you may be having a plan because you want to happen only goody, 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 goody things. But... God has said something for you. Only that will happen to you. Then we will think, then why do we pray? Why you should pray? In those difficult situations, you should pray that you should get strength to be righteous. When you have strength to be righteous, you find peace. That beautiful day, what you have imagined, you will get in a different way. You want a beautiful day or you want beautiful day every day in your ways. Being in your sinful life, you want a beautiful day. No, no. That's the reason certain days are so hard for us. So troublesome. Not even little ray of hope or ray of joy we will find. But God is telling that I have planned for you. That day you have to make it to be a heavenly day. Did you get me? This is God's plan. This is God's way of life. Dear children of God, please understand. Don't rebel. Don't fight. Hmm? Accept the day as he gives. However troublesome it may be. You should have a prayerful life. Stay awake and pray lest you will fall in temptation. That's what God taught us. Today we sang, Lord, teach us to live. Did you mean it? God is teaching you to live. You are singing. Hmm? If you don't want to learn that, don't sing that song. Mean it and sing. Don't just blabber something from your mouth while you are worshipping God. Mean every word that you are singing. So meaningful words we are singing. God, teach us to pray. Teach us to live this life. God is teaching you. Hmm? Hallelujah. 
So God is ultimately in control of our situations and every day of our life. We should believe this and accept whatever we face in our life and have peace with the people and with God. Otherwise, what do we have? If you don't have peace in our heart, we have conflict and anger. Along with that, something else is growing. What is that bitter root? You are not able to understand. That's why this is called a hidden sin. Unnoticed sin. Proverbs 16, 9 says, Though the man of the man plans his way, God directs his ways. Man wants only goody, 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 goody things. And he will go in his own way. That will not happen. He directs his steps. God directs his steps. When we go through trials and tribulations and difficulties, the commandment to obey is Hebrews 12, 14. Make peace with everyone. Very difficult. Sometimes peace is difficult with hard people. But still we have to make peace. Then how much strong should be your prayers? How much your heart should humble down? Huh? Your pride should break. Cut it off. Pride will not work. If you are not dealing with your pride, you can never ever see a good day while you live in this world. You can go to malls or foreign countries eh, spending all your money. That time you will find little peace. Again you will come back to the same old place, same old house, same old working place. Your joy is vanished. Why? Because this bitter root is growing inside. Hallelujah. Joy is off. You are putting off God's joy. So, we are commanded to make peace with the situations and people and exercise self-control to behave like Jesus Christ. We have received grace for this purpose. We have received grace of God to deal with our struggles and be peaceful and not to retaliate, have conflict and anger in our heart. Then you have received the grace of God in vain. We have received the grace of God to train ourselves to renounce our ungodliness. Please write these verses in your calendar. Or on your wall, Titus 2, 12. You all know that you have received grace. You will worship the grace that you have received. Eh? Why did we receive the grace of God? Titus 2, 12. To renounce all our ungodliness. Otherwise, we don't need this grace of God. Hallelujah. And Paul warned in 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Not to receive the grace of God in vain. If you have conflict and anger in your heart. You have received the grace of God in vain. But it is difficult to follow peace with others when we think we have been unjustly treated. If we don't get what we think we deserve, we think certain things, we have to get it. Why God is not giving? First, you should think, is it God's will for you to have that? Something you will fight for it. If that is not God's will, you don't get it. And you will fight it, you don't get it. And when you don't get it, you don't have peace. And it is difficult to follow peace with others when we think people are not treating us well. Yes, many people don't treat us well. Many people, even our own parents, maybe our own siblings or our own children, they may not respect us. Can we throw them? Jesus, teach us to live. Jesus came to teach us to live. Among such people, we should shine like Jesus Christ. That is Christian life. So, when we think people are not treating us well, we cannot have peace. If you don't learn to accept the troubles as they are, and also, if you don't accept the people as they are, if you feel that you deserve more than what you go through, you will not get peace. What will happen? These incidents will sharpen your emotions and the bitter root will grow inside. Just check. Am I sensible? I know. I have to pat my shoulders. I know this is true. In you and in me. Through this attitude of ours, we are living against the commandment of God in Hebrews 12, 14. Pursuing peace with our offenders by forgiving their sins against us and bearing with them lovingly. 
and accepting the facts as they are, hmm, you will marry. Initially, you might have seen that man or woman. When you start living, you can see the real color. Those who are going to marry, this is a tip from me. You will not understand that girl or boy before your marriage. That girl or boy, that man or woman is not the same after you marry. They are going to change. There is a control till you marry. After you marry, you will see the beast in them. So be prepared. As you see the beast in them, you cannot leave them. Once married, you cannot divorce. Bible says only death can separate you. Understand? The sweet days will be bitter days. It will be. It will be. Even if you are in Christ, even if you want to grow holy, that is the truth. So you cannot throw that man or woman and you get sweet, sweet children. Nanna munna. Oh, people are waiting to get nanna munnas. Hmm? Now you think how you are behaving to your parents. Your children are going to behave the same way to you. Please understand. Hmm? Please think how your children will be. Today how you are to your parents, same way. More than that, because what you give it to others will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over to your lap. There is no doubt about this. Ask the experienced people. I am standing here as an experienced woman and I am talking. And this is true. And this is the truth with everyone. So, we cannot divorce a man or a woman. Or we cannot just throw these children, even if they are growing as beasts. Make peace with every man, without which you will not see God. Huh? You thought just if you born again, baptized, you will reach heaven and once saved is always saved. Having this bitter root in the people, people are preaching. Once saved is always saved. Check what I am preaching. Every message of Mine you take and tell me, once saved is always saved or what? That's the reason I told you. Those who are arguing, come to me. My anointing will teach you. My gift will teach you. My gift will explain to you. This is not Anu will be explaining. I have a gift. I have an anointing to explain all your doubts. But people won't come to me. They know that they will get the answer. They want to be in their doubts and their confusions. So make peace with everyone. Oh, how do we live in this family? Husband is turned to be someone. Wife is turned to be someone. Children are someone else. That is the reason at the age of 50, 60, you see the old people. Joy is off. Like our worship leader told, they will go to laughing club. They join laughing club. They can laugh only there. Please go. Please, you need at least that much good hormones let you get. You need to. If you can't grow according to what God says, you have to join in a laughing club. Because your, your joy is put off by something else. What is that? Bitterness. Please understand the truth of God. Hallelujah. Wonderful God, I love my God. Through these attitudes, if we are living, we are living against this commandment that is written in Hebrews 12, 14. Pursuing peace with our offenders by forgiving their sins against us and bearing with them lovingly and accepting them as they are is the way we are growing in holiness. God called us to follow holiness, follow peace and holiness in the midst of all these troubles in our daily struggles to mortify our fleshly response. Oh, you don't have to mortify your fleshly response. You can reach heaven. Some people are giving you pass. Hmm? <laughs> you don't have to mortify your flesh sinful attitudes. By the blood of Jesus Christ, you can cover all these sin. You will reach heaven. This is not foolishness. This is not gospel. That is man's gospel. Paul told Many people will come with their own gospel. Even 2 Peter 3, 16 or 17 it says, Many things what Paul has told, Peter is telling, many have not understood. 
they have twisted the gospel because they didn't understand what Paul said women should not preach. Huh? The other thing. What Paul said they didn't understand. Peter is telling. Second Peter 3, 16 and 17. Peter is telling that many things that Paul has said. These people didn't understand and they have twisted the gospel and telling women cannot be a pastor. My friends understand. Pastorship is not a position. It is a function. It's a humble profession. Pastor is who? Shepherd. A shepherd has to be with all the stinking and rebellious sheep. Whatever they do, the shepherd has to tolerate. This is pastorship. The people who are telling women cannot preach because they didn't understand what Paul has told. And Peter is so clearly telling. They think pastorship is a position. No. It's a function. It's a humble profession of a shepherd. Being with the stinky, rebellious sheep. Getting all the pain from them. Still cleaning them, cleaning them, cleaning them, feeding them, feeding them. Hmm. Women cannot preach. That's the reason last week I told you, come to me, I will explain. So boldly I told you. Why? Because that's my anointing. I don't want any position. I have left my job not to earn through this profession. I have lost many things and standing here. I could have earned a lot of money through my profession. I lost and standing here. Do you know? Not to earn money. To serve God. As a humble shepherd. Nothing else is my aim. But they don't know. That's what 2 Peter 3, 16, 17 says. So holiness involves separating our lives from sinful, bitter reactions and becoming like Christ in our behaviors during trials and tribulations. We cannot be holy before God when being mean-spirited and bitter towards others. So we must respect and accept the sovereignty of God in what he has chosen for us to endure and be committed to allow the fires of afflictions to refine us into his image if you are not ready you can really renounce your Christianity and go back to the place where you came from hmm? the soil of bitterness is a heart that harbors hostility and anger that doesn't deal with the hurt by the grace of God it is a hurt why it is a hurt oh my husband is not behaving with me properly my children are not behaving with me properly that is a hurt. It's a hurt, really. In the human flesh, it's a hurt. But with the grace of God, we have to overcome by forgiving them and accepting them as they are. Hallelujah. When someone becomes bitter, the bitterness takes root in our hearts and grows deeper. Bitterness is a sleeper sin, but the fruit of the root will be always visible as what? Clamor, loud fight. Eh? Some people start fighting their voice they can hear all over the street. How strong is your bitter root? That much you will be yelling at others. How strong your bitter root? That much you will fight with others with loud voice clamor. Yelling at others, shouting loudly and also joy is stolen. I told you they will never ever find joy. Bitterness flourishes in the soil of justification. Those who find justification for their sins will not identify this root of bitterness, but we can see the fruit of bitterness. They will always say, no, no bitterness, but we can always see their fruits as what? Clamor, anger, yelling, shouting, no control. Hallelujah. And Romans 3.14 says, their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. There is a connection between the bad words that come out of our mouth and bitterness in our heart. If you are cursing more easily or using bad words with the people, when they hurt you, understand this root is very strong in you. Please, today should be the day to cut that root after hearing this. You use bad words. You cannot control. Even if you heard so many times that you should not use bad words, but still you use bad words. Because this bitter root is that strong in you. And Another thing that you have to understand is 
Bitter people look for things to criticize. They find fault with others. They justify always the way they feel. And they are hypercritical. They provoke you until you react. That's the nature of the strong spirit. They provoke you. They provoke you. Eh? You will be keeping quiet. You will be keeping quiet. Until you get provoked, the spirit will be behind you. That strong is the spirit. You have seen such people in your own family. If that is in you, what will happen? I am talking. Scientists have proved that bitterness, if left unchecked, will affect the body's hormonal and immune system. Bitter people tend to have BP. BP people will have bitterness inside. And likely to get heart disease. Acts 8.23, Paul says, Gal of bitterness is bound by iniquity. That I am going to explain. Which means bitterness is the inward wickedness of the heart which is the bitter enmity against gospel. This bitterness is the enmity against gospel. You may say, no, I have accepted Jesus Christ. I will read Bible. I will go to church. I am a worship leader. I huh? will do ministry. But if bitterness is growing inside of you, you are against all these Bible says. And Deuteronomy 29, 18, the bitter root is described as root bearing, poisonous and bitter fruit. Root bearing, bitter and poisonous fruit. So, in Hebrews 12, 15, we are seeing, because of the bitterness, many are defiled. Have you ever thought that, why only because of the bitterness, people are defiled? Why only bitterness is mentioned there? I'm going to explain that. Both bitterness and peace of God cannot grow in one heart, in the same heart. Either peace of God will grow in us as we pass every test and temptation and trial and we are sure of our eternal life. Or bitterness will grow in us as we grumble and murmur and be angry at all our trials and tribulations and problems. And you are not using the grace of God. That's the reason you are retaliating to your troubles. So you will be defiled. Why? Because of this one root. Bitter root. If you don't face the problem as they are today, what is going to come, we don't know. So that's the reason I taught this prayer to my church people. Pray every day. Because you are not praying. Yes, sister. Yes, pastor. I will pray. You will shake your head. Huh? From this side to this side, some people will shake. I have seen. But you don't pray this prayer. What is that prayer? Every day morning you should get up and pray. God, today what you are going to give me, I don't know. Is it a good day or a bad day? I don't know. Whatever may be. Help me to be clean in that day. Help me to be like you in that day. Help me to have self-control in all my characters. You should think of all strong characters where you immediately retaliate. You should pray. You should pray. Eh? So suddenly one problem comes, you will be like Jesus Christ. So you are not ready? You are not praying that prayer? So that is the reason Acts 8.23 says it is bound by iniquity. Because you don't want to change. Why you are not praying that prayer? Because you don't want to change. You pray every prayer because you want certain things. You fast and pray if you don't have a job. If you don't have a marriage, you will fast and pray. You know that God will give. Whatever you want, you will pray. Then why you are not praying for the wickedness of your heart? Because you don't want. This is why it is called, it is bound by iniquity. And James 1.12 says, and James 1.12 is the proof which says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test, that means he is not falling, and he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. This is not a separate crown. Only one crown for every person. Bitterness in believers is the end result of receiving the grace of God in vain. If bitterness is growing, you are not receiving the grace of God. You will fall from the grace one day, no doubt from that. Still you will go to church. Still you may be a worship leader. Eh? 
Bitterness is the end result of not properly dealing with our hurts and afflictions which God has permitted for our cleansing. As a result, believers will not face their troubles and tribulations and temptations prayerfully and peacefully and they will not cleanse themselves and they will react in their fleshly natures and in every temptation they will be like worldly people fight in the house. Why? Bound by wickedness. The families, nobody is keeping quiet. When a fire comes, why? They are bound by wickedness. As a result, they live in their born again life with a troubled spirit. As bitterness is growing inside, they are putting off the joy of the Lord inside of them. They easily flares into anger. First reaction is you cannot control your anger. As bitter root is growing, you cannot control your anger. Even in small provocations or inconveniences, and the bitter believer is always troubled in his heart. Hmm? No hope, no joy. Because bitterness is a poison growing in him, as he is not disciplined through God's disciplinary methods, as he is always rebelling against God for his disciplinary methods through trials and tribulations. You need to take the bitterness root very seriously, my friends. It grows beneath the surface of your heart. It is a sleeping sin. How do you know you have this bitter root growing in you? Certain points I will tell you. Do you find yourself constantly replaying the tape of conversation with someone in anger? You will be thinking, oh, they told like this. They were talking to me like this. Are you keep thinking in that way? Are you having imaginary conversation to these people? Then you have bitterness inside of you. Do you feel anger and irritated every time when you hear about certain people? And do you complain to God for your pain that you are going through? After 10 years, the believer is complaining. Why I am going through what I am going through? Initially, he doesn't understand. After 5 years also, he doesn't understand. Why? Wickedness. That person is bound by the wickedness. So if you complain God about your pain, you have bitter root. Do you secretly desire misfortune or failure for certain people? There are many. In this church also, among the believers also, they want some bad things to happen to other people, then only they are happy. Some failure to happen to someone. This fruit is coming from your strong bitter root. And watch your response to someone who does wrong to you. If you get easily angry and provoked, it's bitterness. That anger will come. This is bitter root. You need healing for your bitter root. You need to remove this bitter root. Don't ignore your bitter heart by saying, I know my heart. And there is no bitterness in me, don't say. Because truth of the matter is you don't know your heart because Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick and who can understand? A deceitful heart cannot diagnose a deceitful heart. You need God's help to understand your deceitful heart. You need the Holy Spirit help to understand your deceitful heart. In this church, there is a help guidances will be coming to you. Don't rebel. What is your response to the guidance? God knows how strong is your bitter root. That much is your acceptance to guidance. If that bitter root is just going away, you will be asking every day you give me guidance. Please understand this point. And a response of bitter heart never tolerate when someone has done something wrong to you. By the grace of God, we need to practice to bury that pain and hurt you experience from others and forgive them and show them mercy. We are called to show mercy. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 say that. Be kind to one another and tender-hearted. Forgive one another as God in Christ forgave you. We are called to show mercy. Oh, we will think this person doesn't deserve mercy. You are not a judge. You are a slave of God to obey what God says. You cannot judge the commandment and say that, no, my husband or my children, 
or such and such person doesn't deserve mercy, I will be bitter. I will be angry. I will show what I will do. This shows your bitter root, the strength of your bitter root. Please understand, my friends. Replace your wrong feelings with peace and love towards such people. You cannot be holy unless you follow peace with all men, not just to certain people. Peace with all men. Certain hard people are there, but with them also, we have to have peace. So, may God reveal your bitter heart and purge out its root and heal you. That's my blessing words. Let's close our eyes in prayers.